Hello. This morning, we've got a story about two ladies who found it hard to find enough food. Ruth lived with her mother-in-law, Naomi. They had a hard time finding enough to eat. I'll return to my own country, said Naomi. Perhaps they'll have more to eat there. Naomi was from a town called Bethlehem, many, many miles away. But Ruth didn't want Naomi to travel on her own. Where you go, I will go, she said. Your people shall be your, my people, and your God will be my God. So Ruth and Naomi set off together on the long road to Bethlehem. They arrived at harvest time. Farmers were gathering the grain. Go to the fields, Naomi told Ruth. Hungry people can pick up the grain. Early in the morning, Ruth went to the field. It belonged to a farmer named Boaz. Who's that girl? Boaz asked to help her. Her name is Ruth, said the man. She's picking up grain to share with her mother-in-law, Naomi. Be kind to Ruth, Boaz told the helper. Leave extra grain on the ground for her. Some helpers shared their lunch with Ruth. Ruth went home to Naomi with a basket full of grain. You've done very well, said Naomi. Boaz has been very kind to us. Ruth returned to Boaz's fields every day until the harvest was over. Boaz made sure that all his helpers were kind to her. She always had lots of grain. Boaz had fallen in love with Ruth. Soon, Ruth and Boaz were married. Please come and live with us, they said to old Naomi. Before long, Ruth and Boaz had a baby. Thank you, God, for caring for our family, they said. Okay, so today you've been listening to the story of Ruth. Ruth is a story that you will find in the Bible. The Bible is a bit like having a library because it's made up of 66 books. Can you see all the coloured tags? Each one of them is a different book of the Bible. And one of them is named after Ruth. Now, don't think that you're going to believe this. But out of the 66 books, only two of them are named after women. One's Ruth. Can anyone think what the other story, who the other story is about that's named after a woman? It's Esther. Anyway, today we're thinking about the story of Ruth. Let's think about the characters in that story and what happened to them. So, there was Naomi and her husband, and they had two sons. And in, they lived in Bethlehem, where Jesus was born. And in Bethlehem, there was a famine, which means there wasn't enough food for everybody. So they decided to move, to go to a different country where they might get food. And you know, that happens today. Sometimes refugees, people come to our country because they're trying to find a better life for their children and their families. Anyway, they moved to a place called Moab. And when they were there, the two sons got married to two Moabite women. One was Ruth and one was called Orpha. 
But after they'd been there a while, very sadly, Naomi's husband died. And then a few years later, both her sons died. Naomi must have been heartbroken. So now in our story, the three characters we've got are three widows, Orpha, Ruth, and Naomi. And Naomi says to her daughter-in-laws, I'm going back to Bethlehem. I'm going to travel back to Bethlehem. Because she'd heard that there was more food there now. And then I can stay with my family and my friends. And I'll have support. You two, go back to Moab to be with your family. And Orpha said, thank you, Naomi. And she left and she went back to Moab. But Ruth said to Naomi, and this is my favourite bit of the story, or one of my favourite bits, she said to Naomi, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lay your head, I will lay my head. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Now that was a huge big thing to say and to do. Now, I've travelled to different countries for holidays, but I've never lived in another country. But if you think about going to live in another country, and some of you have done that, I know that, there's lots of things that are going to be different. The language might be different. People might speak a different language. The food will probably be different. The customs will be different. You know, we drive on the left. In lots of countries, people drive on the right. And in this story, also the faith was different. And we can go to different countries where people have different faiths. In Moab, in Ruth's country, people followed lots of gods. There wasn't, they didn't follow the one true God. But she said to Naomi, I'll come with you and I'll follow your God. And they went back to Bethlehem. And when they were in Bethlehem, Ruth had to go out to work every day. She was really hard working. And she went to a field and she would collect the leftovers where the men were harvesting the barley. She would walk behind them and pick up the little bits that had been left. And then she'd gather them all up and take them home. And they'd be ground down to make flour. Now the man who owned the field, a rich man named Boaz, Here's Boaz. And Boaz had heard about Ruth's kindness to Naomi. And he was a kind man too, because he said to his workers, look out for that Moabite woman. Make sure that you leave plenty behind so there's lots for her to pick up. And if she's thirsty, then I want you to give her some water. And eventually, Ruth marries Boaz and they have a baby and they name the baby Obed and Obed when he grows up becomes the grandfather of King David and when we look at Jesus' line where Jesus came from all his ancestors Obed was one of Jesus' ancestors. That's amazing, isn't it? So Ruth is part of the Jesus story. Now I said at the beginning I like this story. I think it teaches us about kindness and it teaches us about loyalty. What does it mean to be loyal?
hope you enjoyed joining in with that song. Such a lot of talent at Holy Trinity. Okay, we've got two prayer ideas. Now, because the story of Ruth is about family, I thought we could pray for our families. And one idea is for you to get some pasta, pasta shapes, pasta that you can, that's got holes in so that you can thread it onto a ribbon or a string. And if on each bit of pasta, you write the name of somebody in your family. So I've written the names on. This is Jill, so that's one of my sisters. And I'm gonna thread her on there. And then when you've put all your family or your friends as well, and you can tie it up and put it around your neck, like this, and then when you hold that person, that person's name, you can look, oh, I'm praying for Jill. Oh, let me see. I'm praying for Mick, one of my brothers. Oh, I'm praying for Elliot, my son. So that's one idea. You can make a prayer necklace. And another idea is to make a bracelet for a friend. So I've done that. By plassing. So you might need a bit of help if you've never done plassing before. But you need three bits of wool or ribbon or string and you knot them together and you take a piece from the outside and you put it on the inside. Then a piece from the other side and you put it on the inside. From the outside to the inside and you go down like that. You may need a bit of help. Maybe there's an older brother or sister that can help you do that. And this reminds me of another verse in the Bible, um, which comes from Ecclesiastes, and it says, um, two is better than one, because when one falls down, the other one can pick them up. So that's like friendship, isn't it? If you've got a friend, when you fall down, your friend can pick you up. And the last bit of that verse says a threefold cord cannot be broken. So it says when there's three, it's really difficult to break. And I always think that's me and my friend and God. So you could make a bracelet. Maybe you can make one for you and one for your friend and you can both wear them. And as you're making that, as you're weaving it together, you're plaiting it, you could pray for the friend that you're going to give it to. Okay, so I'm going to say a prayer now. If you want to, say amen at the end. Dear Father God, we thank you for the story of Ruth and Naomi. We thank you for Ruth's kindness, her faithfulness, her loyalty. Help us to be loyal, kind friends and help us to remember that you are the best friend of all. Amen. See you next week.